I'm back, baby. Uh, after a couple of days away in Cyprus, watching United with a 3-2 win over Omania. It all attention turns to Everton on Sunday in the Premier League, a game that United need to win. We really need to put some results together again. Obviously, the, the game against City was a massive downer. It really, really was. Omania wasn't exactly the best performance by any stretch of the imagination. It was the result we needed. But let's focus on this game against Everton. I'm going to run through my starting 11 and all the predictions. Before I want to start quickly, I want to say, look, a big shout out to everybody out in Omania who came up to me and said, look, man, I enjoy what you're doing in United People's TV. I think you do it right. Plenty of people did. And I never really... I, and never, it's never really happened before. I suppose it's, it's what happens with the growth of the channel. But for me, it gives sort of... It, it shows that what I'm doing is right here on United People's TV. It's a bit like when the 1958 chose the platform to come on for that podcast. People coming up and saying hello to me on European Aways is a testament to that. So big up to every single one of you who did that. Put, put a smile on my face and it just makes me want to work more. But I'm back now. Let's focus... Oh, I can't focus. I want to be back in the sun. Anyway, look, let's focus on Everton. And it's a Sunday night, 7 o'clock kickoff. Really, really weird kickoff. But after losing that City game, we need to win. There's there's no two ways about it. And Goodison Park is never an easy place to travel. If I run through what Manchester United's team was in the last game, there against Omonia. This is what we had out there. And I don't imagine it will be too different to what we're going to see against Everton on Sunday. I'm going to run through the key positions where I think there are questions to be asked, uh, and I'll circle them here. I think there's a conversation to be had about Madasia down there. We're going to talk about Casemiro. We'll talk about Lindelof and his performance there too. We're also, I think we've got to have a conversation about Sancho. We'll talk about Ronaldo, and I would like to talk about Anthony for a little bit as well. But let me get rid of these circles, and then let's get straight into it. You can let me know what you think about the starting 11 in the comments below, as you always do. It's the last time I'm going to put circles on there. That was a stupid idea because I've got to take them all off. But look, let's get into it and let's talk about this lad. Now, it was a pretty bad mistake. I think we can fairly say that now from uh, Malaysia for that first goal for, for Omnia. Um I don't think United gave him the easiest position to hold the ball in, but it was a loose touch and then United got hit on the counter. We got broken through transition. And it was an embarrassing goal to score. And as well as that, Thor Luke Shaw came off the bench against Omonia and him and Rashford really made a difference to that team. I think they really, really did. And this is a squad game this season. And I think we're going to be seeing Luke Shaw get the opportunity now in the Premier League. Uh, I think Eric Ten Hag has shown that he is a man on who plays players on form. I don't think this is a case of him saying, look, you're getting booted out. But I think he'll take him to the side and say, look, man, you know you made the mistake. I think I don't need to tell you that. Luke Shaw played well. I'm going to give Luke an opportunity now. In the same way that Tyrell Madison was given his opportunity against Liverpool after our ridiculously crap start to the season. I think Shaw will get a chance here on Sunday night against Everton. You can let me know what you think about that in the comments. And I, as I said, I don't think it's a case of just sim simply saying, ah, oh, this is Madison getting booted out for the mistake. It's not at all. But we need our players, our whole squad, to be good and reliable enough this season. We can't just ostracise and keep people out of the team completely. But I think at some point Harry Maguire will come back in. But look, I thought Victor Lindelof played okay against Omania. I think Lissandro Martinez was the better defender. But I think Lissandro Martinez is the better defender. So he, he will be playing better than him. Pretty much in most every, every, every single game. But as a partnership, as a centre-back, there is a place for Victor Lindelof in this defence across the course of the season. I think even if Rafael Varane's sprained ankle was recovered, I don't think that Eric Ten Hag would risk him against Everton. I think he's going to wait. He'd rather he get have another few days. And when you've got Victor Lindelof, who's there and ready, I think he'll start him. And this Everton team is not exactly free scoring right now. There's no Calvert-Lewin. There's no physical presence to really deal with. Or maybe he will be back. I don't really know. But I would, I imagine that's the, probably the back five we're going to be seeing there. I think Delo has started. Has Delo started every game this season? So I think he, he may have. I worry about what happens when Delo gets injured. I'll tell you, that's the biggest... Not weak, no, we've got weaknesses in the squad, but that's a massive concern and a drop off to what's going to happen with our football when Delo drops out of the team. But that back five, I think that's going to be pretty settled. That's not settled, there's a change happening. But that would be my back five choice against Everton. And in midfield, there's definite questions to ask and definite conversations to be had. What did you think about Casemiro's performance against Omonia? I thought, I think for the first time, I really sort of looked at him and said, he's really rusty, isn't he? He's really rusty, like simple things, just like a, a pass that's over hit or a touch that's a little bit too far away from his feet. Um, I'm still not worried at all. I still absolutely think at some point 
the rust will be sort of brushed off, blown away, and he'll come back to his like elite best. He's not there at the moment. I think he starts on Sunday. I think Casemiro will keep his place in that team. And I'll be honest, I think we'll keep that midfield three. You could put Scott McTominay in there. You could put Fred in there. I don't think we'll be doing it from the start. I think a, a mistake against City was starting these two together. It was um, it was a show of confidence from Eric Ten Hag in his, in his midfielders, those two, to go up toe-to-toe -to -toe against City. But the fact of the matter is, and maybe this is hindsight speaking, that we were just far too open with Bruno and Eriksen in the team. Against Everton, we should be having far more of the ball. It shouldn't be as intensively as intense in terms of the pressure that, that Everton will be putting on our defence compared to City. And I think Casemiro will keep his place in that team. I think Scott McTominay will come on for the last 15, 20 minutes. And I think that's pretty much what we should be doing from now on. You don't sign Casemiro to be McTominay's understudy. McTominay's place in the team was reliant on form. Form diminished against City. Casemiro came in. Casemiro not, might not have the form, but he's got the pedigree. He's got the proven track record that knows if you trust him and continue with him, you know he's going to get better. It's not, an, it's not, in my opinion, it's not a case of if, it's a case of when. I think Eric Ten Hag will be thinking that as well. Going on to the attack, I think there are sort of questions pretty much about every single position. I want to speak about this lad first, though. Because I really, really enjoyed his performance against Omanir. Every time Anthony got on the ball, he looked upwards, head up, looked towards his defender and went at that defender. Sometimes he went past him, sometimes he got fouled, sometimes he cut inside. And he was looking to shoot so often. And if it wasn't for like an outrageously good save in the first half, that was right in front of us in the away end, Anthony would have had an absolute perler of a goal, like an Iron Robin type goal. You know what Iron Robin did? He's going to cut inside on his left foot. He just couldn't stop him. Anthony, I feel as he gets more and more confident, he scored in his first two games for United, Arsenal and City away. And he would have scored in this third as well, if not for an outrageous save. I thought he was a bit of a difference maker, a massive creative outlet, and we need him. And I, I'm definitely going to be starting Anthony against Everton. No questions asked. I think he will be creating chances. He will be cutting inside. And I'd almost even bet that Anthony will probably score a goal from that region there. I wouldn't be surprised if we see that Anthony Perler that goes in there. He looked... He looked more confident on the ball than he has in the last two games. There's still so much more to improve from him. But I really like what I see with Anthony. And I want to see more of it. Hey, what? Isn't it a bit of a polar opposite conversation to what we're seeing with Jaden Sancho? I'm talking about how Anthony seems to be getting his confidence and seems to be sort of like increasing in stature at United. And Jaden Sancho just seems to be sort of fading away a little bit. I'm, I'm, I'll probably put him in the same Casemiro category. I'm not, I'm not massively worried or hugely concerned. Considering what we've seen before from Sancho, what we saw at Dortmund and what we saw in the preseason too. Jaden Sancho, I don't know what it is, but if he wants to get in that World Cup team, and it's a really competitive position for that England squad, he has to improve. He really does have to improve. Now, why I don't know whether you're probably going to... I imagine you'll, li you'll likely see this, right? I imagine we'll see Rashford come onto the left-hand side and Jaden Sancho drop to the bench. Again, if we're playing players on form, there's no way you can't have Rashford in that starting eleven after his performance from the bench against Omanir. Came on, made a real difference. Cracking goal, nice assist for the second and the third. What? Fair play to Marcus Rashford, man. Really important cameo from the bench at a time when we really needed it. Um, and he tried his best to fluff up the first chance as well by, with the mistouch, but cut inside an absolutely wonderful finish into the corner. But again, speaking about players on form or players out of form. Cristiano Ronaldo. I felt against Omania, I thought he played okay, I'll be honest. But I think we were, it was almost like everybody actively in that team was just willing and wanting United to score to the point where our players sort of made different and stranger decisions because they were trying to get Ronaldo in. It was like we were trying not to score as a team, but trying to get Ronaldo to score. Because, you know, Ronaldo that's confident, that's happy, that's smiling and scoring goals is better for United now than a player who isn't scoring. But Martial came off the bench, played in a little bit of a slightly unfamiliar role and a little bit deeper uh, in sort of the number 10, wasn't it? Cracking goal, really good finish. And I think there's no chance that Ronaldo starts this game against Everton as a consequence of that. I imagine what you're going to be seeing is that. And that 
is an exciting front three. It's a really dynamic front three. That's a front three that can press and should press. Rashford needs to be better in the press. Anthony was better in the press against Omania. Martial, he was good in the press in preseason. Let's see it here in the Premier League. But for me, that's my prediction for the game there. The only changes, I've got Luke Shaw coming in for Malasia at left back. I've got Rashford coming in. Did Rashford start the game? No, he did start the game against Omania. So he's going to come in on the left wing. And I'm going to be putting Martial up front there. Those are the changes that I would make. You can let me know what you think about that in the comments. But we've got to win here against Everton. We really, really do. After the City game, it wasn't it. It was a game I was expecting to lose. Not in the manner that we lost it. In the manner of the performance in the first game. But Ten Hag has... The players showed a response in that second half against Omania. But it shouldn't have required a response. It should have been far more clinical finishing in the first half. It should have been a game where it was like 5-1 to United... Real easy. And we made it really difficult for ourselves. He'll want a response in the league here against, against Everton off the back of that City game. And we need to put it in. 7 o'clock on Sunday. That's my starting 11. You can let me know what yours would be in the comments below. I don't think Varane will be risked, even if he is fit. I think Shaw will come in. I think Casemiro starts in the Premier League for the first time. I think it'll be a front three of Rashford, Martial and Anthony. And Bruno just keeps his place. I don't think there's really too much for a need for a conversation about Bruno. People seem to go over the top with Bruno and the criticism about him. And like, oh, he's losing the ball X, Y, Z. That's what number 10s do, man. They lose possession a lot because they create the most. That's what Bruno is, has been, and always will be at United. You can let me know what your start 11 is in the comments below. I'm back, baby. A couple of days away. Really enjoyed it. Good to see everyone. It was a good catch up. Uh, and it was a win. I suppose most importantly, what do you think about the game against Everton on Sunday and my starting 11? You let me know in the comments below. And I'll be here tomorrow with my match review. Hopefully, a lot quicker than it was out in Cyprus. Man, that internet was bad. <laughs>